Man, 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 what an amazing draft class. This draft class definitely has the potential to be one of the best draft classes in a long time. Maybe even better than the 2003 draft class. Let's get right into it. Welcome to Speak Through Sports. My name is Sparsh, and today we're going to be talking about the NBA 2021 draft class, round one, picks one to 30. So what I'm going to be doing today is just sort of grading the team's pick, sort of evaluating the player's performance in college or the G League or overseas. And we're just going to sort of be talking about their future with the team, how great this move is. And man, I'm just so excited to talk about this with you guys. First of all, before I'd like to start, I'd like to give credits to Dorji from the Speak True Sports team for helping me write this article. And be prepared, guys. This is going to be a pretty long video. So make sure you get some food, get some water. And also, while you're here, make sure you follow our Instagram, our Twitter, and our website. And it's just mentioned right here. And don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe to our channel. And make sure you also press the bell for push notifications so you're always up to date with our content. This also makes us more eager to upload content for you guys. And we're really excited to post stuff for all of you, right? Anyways, so let's just get straight into it. So pick one goes to Detroit. And <laughs> this is just a consensus number one. I mean, who else really saw that Detroit was going to really pick anybody else? I'm pretty sure everybody sort of realized that Cade Cunningham would be the number one pick. So he's from Oklahoma State, 6'8", 220 pounds. And the thing that's great about Detroit picking Cade is that he's going to bring a lot of excitement and life back to Detroit for the first time in practically a very long time. And what's great about Cade is that he's a really well-rounded player in this class. He's able to shoot, facilitate, and he has great perimeter defense and he's also a really great generational player could definitely be one of the best players in this draft and his versatility is so valuable for any team he's got great shot selection and he has a really deep offensive bag but the thing is he yeah, does have some few flaws i mean you can't expect everybody to be perfect right and the flaws are that he's not really the most athletic player and sometimes he struggles to get to the basket, right? So this isn't really a major issue, however, because he already has the size and the frame to be a great finisher at the rim. All he needs is just a deft touch at the rim and gaining some more muscle. So once he develops that frame, he'll definitely be a better finisher at the rim. And he'll definitely add some more things to his offensive bag. The Pistons definitely needed a new franchise cornerstone. And Cade Cunningham looks like he's going to be one of those guys. And this will definitely take pressure off of Jeremy Grant on the offensive end. I mean, Jeremy Grant, he had an amazing breakout season last year. You know, after that season with the Nuggets, he had a great role player kind of style. Now he's elevated his game, you know, averaging 20 plus points a game. You know, this is definitely going to take a lot of pressure off of Jeremy Grant. And if Detroit can surround Cade with the correct pieces, he could definitely lead the playoffs of playoff contention in the East which we definitely haven't seen in a very long time. Now, number two, this is a really exciting pick. And I'm really happy that Houston chose this guy. So from the G League Ignite, 6'6", six six, 186 pounds, Houston selects Jalen Green. Now, there's a lot of sort of speculation to where Jalen Green would sort of land in the draft. Lots of people were saying he'd end up four, right? Maybe with the Raptors or even with the Cavs. Some of them had a, him at number two with Houston. So there was sort of a lot of, you know, unsureness about like where he would exactly be, but I'm really glad that Houston got this guy. He's definitely like the most explosive player in this draft class, and he'll form a really dynamic backcourt duo with Kevin Porter Jr., and he'll definitely revitalize Houston after trading their superstar James Harden. This is definitely a right step forward in the rebuilding era and forming a new sort of style of offense and identity compared to the th the three-point sort of style offense that Houston had with James Harden and Mike D'Antoni. And to add even more to that, Jalen Green is just such an electric scorer and freak athlete. It's perfect for Houston's style of offense. He's a great finisher at the rim, and you should expect to see some flashy dunks and layups this season. This guy's definitely going to bring lots of excitement value to Houston. He's also a great shooter, and he's a tough shot maker, being able to shoot off the dribble, and his shot creation is one of the best in the class. 
He does have potential to be like a solid defender. It's just how much effort will he be able to put into that, right? I want to see how much work he'll be able to put in the off season, during the season, and throughout the years in his defensive outputs. Hopefully, he'll be able to become a better defender and not just be more of a one-dimensional offensive player. Maybe he could be a potential Harden replacement. This is something that we'll see with time. But he does have that superstar, superstar potential. Definitely will be a great role player for years to come. Sorry, not role player, but star player. Now, number three. As I was saying, you know, there was sort of lots of speculation where picks two to four would end up. Evan Mobley was also sort of, you know, maybe number two, maybe number four. Nobody was really sure. But from USC, seven foot zero, 215 pounds, Cleveland selects Evan Mobley. And I'm really happy that Cleveland got this guy. He's a very versatile big, being able to play the five or four, preferably at the center. That would be a better position for him. And he's one of the best defenders in his class. You know, his defensive prowess is stellar alongside his great shot blocking and pick and roll defense. He's got a really great offensive game as well, being able to stretch the floor. I mean, at seven foot zero, and he's got such a really long athletic frame, and he's also very mobile for his size as well. This guy can definitely be great in the transition sort of style of play. And he could definitely be a good replacement for Jared Allen if he signs with another team. You know, Jared Allen is being pursued by some teams right now. There are rumors that the Raptors are the biggest threat to landing Jared Allen. We will see about that. I will make sure to update you guys about that later in a future video. But, I mean, let's say that the Cavs do keep Jared Allen. This would definitely be like a great twin tower duo for Cleveland, and they will definitely complement each other as they are both fantastic on the defensive end and on the glass. And he'll definitely complement Sexton or Garland. I mean, it depends, you know, who's going to stay with the Cavs. We don't know about that yet. But he'll definitely be great in the transition plays. And I'm really excited to see this new Cleveland core in the years to come. Okay, so this is one of the more controversial picks, probably the most controversial pick in the draft. Because prior to the draft selection night, everybody was sort of expecting Jalen Suggs to be picked by Toronto. I mean, even Wojnarowski and Shams were also tweeting that the Raptors are zeroing in on Jalen Suggs. But instead, from Florida State at six foot nine, 227 pounds, they choose Scotty Barnes instead. And a lot of people were really sort of confused and frustrated with this pick but after sort of looking back at it you know even I was sort of invested in the Jalen Suggs hype I mean he's definitely got a lot of great plays you know that buzzer beater during the March Madness run but this pick is the type of player that Toronto needs you know Scotty Barnes he's a very versatile player he's able to guard every position very well and this is something that the Raptors really adore that defensive style of play and his defensive potential is endless and he's got a really long wingspan which helps him to contest shots at a consistent basis you know he's a very high energy player who's great in the transition and he's a very good playmaker for his size now now once we got scotty barnes there's a lot of more speculations and likeliness that siakam is going to be traded because now we added a versatile forward to our core instead of a guard, right? Now, this might give some opportunity for the Raptors to sort of include Siakam in a sign-and-trade package with Lowry. And this definitely gives them a side a lot more leverage for this sort of scenario. You know, they, they could be focusing more on the OG and sort of Scotty Barnes tandem and build the team around them. And... We'll just see about that. Again, I will update you guys more on trade scenarios and other sort of trades that actually do happen later in the weeks to come. But this is a great pick for Toronto. You know, Scotty has already been working on his jump shot. He's been working really hard in the offseason. You know, out of all the draft players, this guy had by far the best workout in the, uh, in the training with the Raptors team compared to all the other draft uh, picks. And he's already getting better at his shot. And then again, like what I'm saying, his defense is just 
absolutely incredible. This is something that the Raptors are always interested in. And, you know, the Raptors are really known for developing their players, especially with their shot making. You know, people are criticizing Scotty Barnes so much. They're like, oh, he doesn't really have a jump shot. And I'm like, okay, but OG didn't really have a jump shot either when he entered the league. Pascal Siakam didn't have a jump shot either before he entered the league. Norman Powell, he didn't really have a jump shot before entering the league. But now you see Norman Powell, he's a great shooter. And although he's on Portland now, he's definitely established a rule for himself. Siakam still has a bit to work on his shot, but he's definitely becoming a lot more consistent than he was from you know, the very beginning. And OG Ananobi, one of the best three-point shooters in the league. Great from the perimeter, great from the corners, absolutely amazing shooter. And I have no doubt that this will be a great pick in the future. Scotty Barnes is going to be an amazing player for the Raptors. And what's so great to see is that he was actually excited. You know, when he was shimmying after sort of getting selected, that brought so much happiness to me sort of as a Raptors fan, because it's good to see players excited to come to Toronto. And this really means a lot for the city and the country of Canada. So I'm really excited to see this guy develop. And Toronto is definitely a team that you should look out for. They're definitely going to come back and play off contention. Now, this year was sort of an off year. I'm really excited to see this Barnes and OG sort of duo thrive. Okay, so this sort of controversy, you know, Jalen Suggs going at five instead of four. And Orlando had this pick, and they selected from Gonzaga, six foot four, 205 pounds, Jalen Suggs. And this was a very solid pick for the Magic. I mean, of course, you know, those four guys, including Suggs, were definitely like the clear favorites for the top four. Scotty Barnes was also was projected at like five. Some of them, some people had him at four, right? But Jalen Suggs is definitely in that top five, and this is pretty much the next best available option. What's great about Suggs is that he's a very well-rounded guard, and he doesn't really excel at one specific area. You know, he's got a really big bag of just talent. But his playmaking, his athleticism, and his improved shooting will be a key factor for Orlando. But the thing is, Orlando's kind of stacked in the guard department. You know, after drafting Cole Anthony last year, and, you know, they also have Mark Gilfeltz. And although he's recovering from an injury, you know, the, my bet is that Suggs will be coming off the bench. And they'll slowly integrate him into the starting lineup. I'm really excited to see the team sort of build around him and... Orlando's definitely going to be coming up in the next few years. You know, their players are starting to get a lot better. I'm really excited for this team as well. Okay, so OKC gets the sixth pick. And from the Adelaide 36ers, at 6'8 and 185 pounds, they select Josh Giddy. And my first thoughts were, wow, they selected him that high. This is another shock of the draft, sort of early into the draft selection process. You know, OKC took a big gamble on the Australian player. Josh Giddy, he's really great at playmaking. He's able to spot his teammates consistently, and he's good at distributing the ball in transition. The thing is, though, is that he's a pretty raw prospect. There's a lot of weaknesses to his game, sort of his shot collection, selection, etc. And we'll see in time whether OKC has really messed up with this pick. And, you know, he's not really great at at perimeter shooting and his defense is lackluster then again we'll just see how it goes as time goes on i'm happy he got selected but i really do think okc could have benefited from choosing somebody else over josh giddy so this is one of the more sort of questionable picks in the draft i guess you could say the first questionable pick now for seven oh my goodness the warriors just never fail to impress me with their picks it, they're so good at just selecting the talent and man this was the kind of piece that they needed so from the g league ignite at six foot eight 220 pounds gold state warriors select jonathan kuminga and this is a pick via minnesota and this guy he's so ideal for golden state he's got a great greediness and defensive ability and it's just second to none one of the best defensive players in the draft and he's got a scary defensive impact and he has an NBA level body, which is a huge positive. 
And he's also coming from the G League, so he played with a bunch of bigger and older guys. So he's able to sort of get that experience already, you know, and he's more prepared for the league, just like Jalen Green is, right? So he has that step above the other players in the draft. Even though he wasn't selected like at the top five, he definitely has that readiness already and step ahead of these other players. And this is a really huge positive, and his rebounding will be really useful for Golden State. And Draymond Green as a mentor for Jonathan Kuminga, amazing. Draymond Green, such an amazing leader, such an amazing player. He's always doing everything that helps his teammates, and Kuminga's really going to strive here. The thing is, though, his offensive game is a bit raw, but if he develops a comfortable set shot at the corner, he will fit in nicely with the Warriors' pace and spacing. Because, and the Warriors play really fast style of offense with Curry. Curry will always go fast, and then whenever he's sort of in the paint, he'll either go for the layup, or he'll dish it out to somebody at the three, and set up for the perimeter shot, like what he did with Clay when they were like the Splash Brothers sort of duo. And, you know, if Jonathan develops this kind of shot, right, he'll definitely add to the Warriors' offensive capabilities. And, I mean, the Warriors are really lucky to get this guy. This is a really great pick because he will make up for their defensive uh, ability. Right? And once Clay comes back, I mean, we don't really know how he's going to be like, right? Is he going to be 100%? Because don't forget, after suffering that ACL, he also suffered an Achilles injury, right? And Clay's a really great on ball defender, but we don't know if he'll be like 100%. So getting Jonathan Kuminga to also be that defensive role player, amazing, amazing pick for Golden State Warriors. Okay, so Orlando gets the eighth pick from this draft. And this is a pick via Chicago. So from Michigan, at six foot nine and two hundred twenty, Orlando selects Franz Wagner. This is a really good pick for Orlando. He's a good, versatile defender. Wagner will be a great pairing alongside Jonathan Isaac. What's great about Wagner is that he can guard multiple positions, and his floor spacing is very useful. He has the potential to be a solid three and D player in the league, which is a hot commodity in today's NBA. You know. As an influence of sort of Steph Curry's style of offense, Damian Lillard's style of offense, it's a lot faster pace than it was in like the old school, you know, Jordan era style of ball. They're always like going fast, going for the layups, the blow buys, right? And if it's not there, dish it out to somebody from the three. You know, it's also just an influence of sort of the new shot clock rule. After you get the rebound, you have 14 seconds to shoot. So it's a lot faster pace, dishing it out to three, right? You're Definitely going to be generating a lot more offense now. So to have that 3 and D style of player, amazing for this style of play in the NBA. And Orlando will definitely be more improved on the defense after their Suggs and Wagner pick. These are solid prospects who are definitely going to help their rebuild and hopefully get them in playoff contention within the next few years to come. Orlando, they're making really good picks right now. And I'm really looking forward to seeing them develop in these next few years. Okay, so this is one of the more questionable trade selections, sorry, in this draft. So, yeah, I don't really know what to say about this because I don't really think this is a great pick. Anyways, so from Baylor at six foot two and 205 pounds, the Sacramento Kings select Davian Mitchell. Okay, not to say that Davian Mitchell is not a good player. He's an amazing, exciting player. But this just doesn't fit well with the Kings. And the Kings, they really messed up on this draft. Because they were they were already stacked with talented guards. De'Aaron Fox, you know, one of the fastest sort of guards in the NBA. He's incredibly fast, you know. Probably one of the fastest in comparison. Maybe Russell Westbrook might be faster. But, you know, you got a really fast guard. And you also have an amazing guard in Tyrese Halliburton, right? one of the front runners in the Rookie of the Year race last season. And don't forget, the Kings also have Terrence Davis as well. So he's a great solid piece off the bench. So you're now you have Davian Mitchell probably coming off the bench, right? And the thing is, he's already 23 years old. So it, could, it is risky to take an older prospect, right? Now, this isn't the best fit, but he has a really good offensive skill set. And his defense should not be overlooked as he's a very good perimeter defender for his size. Okay, 
this is a really great pick as well. So New Orleans had the 10th pick, but then they traded this pick to Memphis. And from Stanford at 6 foot 8 and 185 pounds, Memphis selects Zaire Williams. And this is a really great pick for Memphis. I am very, very happy that Memphis selected this guy. Zaire suits the grind and culture of the Grizzlies. And I believe this is just a fantastic pick. You know, got a potential to become one of the best two-ways players of the class. Being able to be a three-level scorer in his perimeter defense, absolutely incredible. He's got, he has really great playmaking, and he's amazing in the transition. You know, overall, good fit for Memphis. Keep an eye on the Grizzlies team this season. They'll be a really fun young team, especially after last year, last season, sorry, where, you know, they had John ja Morant, Dylan Brooks. They started to become really explosive near the end of the season. And now they lost Valanchunas, right? So Zaire Williams starts to make up for this, right? You have a great player in the transition, and you can have a really fast style of offense. And this is really exciting for Memphis. And I'm just really happy that they selected this guy. Memphis is definitely going to be one of the teams that's going to be rising up in the West. And in the next few years, they're definitely going to be a good threat to a lot of other serious contenders in the West. So make sure you also watch out for this team too. This is a really, really great pick. Okay, so this pick went a bit higher than I had expected. And from UConn at six foot five and 190 pounds, Charlotte selects James Boak Knight. He, solid pick for Charlotte, I'll say. He did this did go higher than expected, as I mentioned earlier. But what Boak Knight adds is great shooting ability, and he's got an amazing shot from the three. And he's able to do this while being able to finish in the paint. And he can definitely be integrated as a solid bench guard and backcourt duel with Ball and Rozier. We'll see how the you know the lineups sort of made. But the thing is, though, is that he suffers from poor perimeter defense and does need to improve at reading the passing lane. So this could be some sort of trouble for Charlotte if they try to integrate him more into the starting lineup. Okay, this was also another surprise for me. I was not expecting San Antonio to pick this guy as I expected him to be projected not even as a lottery pick. But anyways, so from Alabama, 6'6", six six, 190 pounds, the San Antonio Spurs select Joshua Primo. Great shooter, and will have an instant impact off the bench for the Spurs, who lack three-point shooting. I mean, it's not really surprising that the Spurs lack three-point shooting anyways, especially with Greg Popovich still there. He's got that really old-school style offense, where, you know, instead of shooting from the three, you know, they drive into the paint more. They create the mid-range shot, right? That's Greg Popovich's more favorite style of offense. So that also might have been a reason why Greg Popovich chose uh, Joshua Primo compared to the other guys. He's also got a pretty great shot creation. And it's going to be interesting to see how he does with the San Antonio Spurs as, you know, Greg Popovich is still there. You know, we don't know when he'll retire or, you know, if any other coach will replace him soon. So this guy, he's a pretty interesting fit. I think he'll do nicely in this system because they don't really thrive off the three too much. So this is a team that, you know, will be able to build this guy pretty well. Now, Indiana gets the 13th pick and from Oregon at six foot six, 190 pounds, they select Chris Duarte. This pick also went a lot higher than expected. And he's not the ideal playmaker, and he's more of a catch-and-shoot type of player. And this is great when being Fred on the screen and rules, right? The Pacers don't really need sort of a playmaker right now in these draft picks because they already have Malcolm Brogdon, and they also have uh, DeMontis Sabonis, and he's becoming better with the playmaking, right? And this is going to be great if... Duarte can develop that sort of catch and shoot even more because it'll help complement their playmaking. And this is going to be exciting for Indiana. You know, Indiana's been one of the more inconsistent teams, you know, unfortunately due to coaching, but they definitely have the talent and star power there to be a good playoff contender in the East. Now, the only problem with Chris Duarte is that he gets exploded in the one on one ball defense, but at the same time, he provides very great team defense intangibles. 
Okay. This is a very great pick. As I was saying, Golden State, they just always do the right things when selecting talent. And I think right now, throughout this video so far, we can say that Golden State are definitely the current winners of this draft. So, from Arkansas, 6'6", six six, 205 pounds, the Golden State Warriors like Moses Moody. Absolutely amazing steal. And they're really fortunate that they got Moody falling to 14. Moody's offensive game, it's very polished. And he's able to create his own shot, and he's a very solid three-point shooter. And his defensive impact is extremely notable, however. And, man, he I saw like a lot of his footage in college, and oh my goodness, he is a great on-ball defender. He's going to be a big nightmare on those one-on-one -on -one matchups. That's This is an amazing pick to get. You know, Kuminga and Moody were the steals of this draft. Man, the Warriors, they're already such a great team offensively. You know, with the Splash Brothers duo, Draymond Green as their sort of playmaking facilitator, defensive guy. And now they just added even more defensive identity to this team. And they also have other great defenders and players like Andrew Wiggins as well. So it's like they're starting to become even more complete than they already were. This is such an exciting team. And the Golden State Warriors, if Clay is back 100%, Golden State Warriors are definitely going extremely deep into the playoffs. And don't be surprised if they make it to like the Western Conference Finals. Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, amazing mentors for these guys. And I am just so excited for this team to get back into it. San Francisco, you better be really excited. This is an exciting time to be a Golden State fan. Okay, so we're halfway through the draft now, at least in round one. And the Washington Wizards have the 15th pick. And from Gonzaga at 6'7", 220 pounds, the Washington Wizards select Corey Kispert. Now, the Wizards got themselves the best shooter of the class. The problem is, though, they have a lot of forwards. Kispert's floor spacing and hard effort on the defensive end is very useful, and he's going to be a solid starter. But the Wizards already have Denny, Rui, Kuzma, and Bertans as their main forward core. Now, this raises some questions. Would the Wizards be able to trade Bertans and be able to dump some of that salary, though, and dump $60 million? Could they potentially trade Bertans and make way for Corey? This would be good to get him into the starting lineup while also clearing some cap space and make the Wizards more flexible in free agency. Because it looks like Bradley Beal is planning to stay with the Wizards. He really loves that city and I'm really glad that he likes to be there. But I really hope that the Wizards can sort of take advantage of this and be able to build that team around him and also integrate Corey Kispert into the team lineup and rotations a lot more. Okay, so I was really surprised about this pick getting traded to Houston because this player, he's absolutely incredible. So from Besitkas, 6'9", 235 pounds, the Houston Rockets select Alperin Sengen. And oh my goodness, this is an amazing pick. The Houston Rockets, they're definitely going up there as the winners of the draft competing with Golden State. And... They just selected the best Turkish player available right now. He's one of the most underrated rookies of the season. And what's really great about this guy is he has that Nikola Jokic sort of style skill set. Great playmaking for his size. And his offensive game, absolutely really nice. He's got that really nice finesse to his game, just like Nikola Jokic. And he's an amazing rebounder as well. The thing is though, he gets pushed around quite easily. For his size, yes, 235 pounds. But it is kind of misleading, right? Same kind of like weight comparisons with Durant and Giannis, right? Now, if Alperin can add some muscle mass to his body, he will definitely be a bigger force in the paint, especially when competing against other bigs like Rudy Gobert, Joel Embiid, you know, Anthony Davis, etc. And what's even greater about this guy is he won the Turkish Super League MVP at only 18 years old. Sounds like somebody familiar, right? Like Luka Doncic winning the EuroLeague MVP at 16, right? Different leagues, right? Different ages, but still, this is definitely a great accolade to his career already. And 
having some sort of tower tandem with Christian Wood, you're adding another presence in the paint. This is starting to look like a more complete sort of rebuild for Houston. And this would definitely be great for their team in the years to come. Houston, you this is a team you should be looking out for. Now, these young players and the picks that they're making, they're starting to look more complete after the James Harden era. And I'm very excited for this team. Okay, so Memphis had the 17th pick, right? And the thing is that after they got that pick, they trade that to New Orleans. And from Virginia at 6'8", 206 pounds, Memphis selects Trey Murphy III. Solid pick for the Pelicans. They needed more spacing, and Murphy certainly fits that role. You know, Murphy is one of the best catch-and-shoot players in the league, and he shoots at a very impressive 41.7% on those attempts last season for Virginia. His defense isn't talked about enough. He's able to guard multiple positions, and his length and wingspan helps contest shots. He can be a great player off the bench, but he can also be playing in the five in the small ball lineup, and he complements Zion Williamson very well as he's a good rebounder for his size, right? And, you know, his comp, catch and shoot, this would be really great, you know, if Lonzo Ball does stay with New Orleans, opens more playmaking abilities for Lonzo Ball, right? And New Orleans, they're definitely on the come up. These young guys are definitely thriving over there right now. I'm really excited to see this team in the next few years to come. They're definitely going to be a great team, and they might be able to sneak into the playoffs sometime pretty soon. So keep an eye out for them. Okay, so this pick was via Miami, and OKC had the 18th pick. And from Florida, at 6'5 and 190 pounds, the OKC Thunder select Trey Mann. OKC just added some explosive offensive weaponry to spark some excitement off the bench. This is a great pick for them. Mann has a really polished offensive skill set, and he's very shifty, and his outside shooting is very solid. And he's capable of creating his own shot, and his playmaking skills will be useful. And this is really great for OKC's second backcourt. And it would be solidified with Josh Giddy and Trey Mann. And OKC, you know, they have a really great future to come. This is a team that you should also watch out for in the next few years as well. Okay, this is a pretty questionable move by New York to sort of trade their pick to Charlotte. right? Because New York ends up trading down. And Charlotte... They end up getting the 19th pick, and from Texas at 6'10 and 218 pounds, they select Kai Jones. And I'm quite shocked how he fell this far, as his skill set is actually really useful for any team. He's the perfect fit for the Hornets, and pairing him with Lamella Ball will result in many lobs and easy baskets. Jones, he's such an athletic center, and he's a really big monster in the defensive end, right? He's one of the best shot blockers in the class, and he's a multi-positional defender, and he th really thrives in the transition, you know, finishing 75.8% in those attempts. This is really good for the Charlotte Hornets. Having a big center, good shot blocker, good defender, this will definitely add to their defensive uh, capabilities, and that's 75.8% on the transition play. That is very, very essential. You know, LaMelo Ball... He's really good in the transition play offense. You know, he'll be able to dish it far with those deep assists, get those easy buckets. Kai Jones will definitely be able to benefit a lot from LaMelo Ball. This is a great pick for Charlotte. You know, Charlotte's definitely coming up on the rise. And this is a team you should also watch out for in the East. And they can definitely sneak into those playoff spots pretty soon. So you better watch out for them. Okay. This is another big steal of the draft. At 6 foot 9, 220 pounds from Duke, the Atlanta Hawks like Jalen Johnson. Again, as I said, amazing steal. This guy's game it just screams point forward. He's a great facilitator for his size and position and he's a really amazing player in transition. This is definitely going to complement Trey's playmaking style and his athleticism allows him to finish at the rim. And that's one of his strongest tra traits. What's even better for the Atlanta Hawks is that he's a great perimeter defender and always puts 110% on the defensive end. The thing with the Atlanta Hawks is they were really close to making the finals and they became a really good dark horse team. 
after they acquired Nate McMillan, you know, once they got him, they got the third best record in the NBA ever since. That is nothing to sneeze at, especially for such a solid young core. Trey Young, John Collins, DeAndre Hunter, Cam Reddish, Kevin Herter, right? I could just go on about how great these young guys are. And unfortunately for Atlanta, they lost a lot of sort of perimeter defense with DeAndre Hunter being out with a meniscus tear. Cam Reddish also coming back later in the series, right? You know, had the Atlanta Hawks had those guys in the playoffs, maybe they would have made it to the finals. But, you know, adding Jalen Johnson to this squad, you're definitely adding more perimeter defense presence. And this is, I'm just so excited. Atlanta's such a fun city, such a great coach. This is such a great time to be at Atlanta right now. You have a great superstar in Trey Young, great player in John Collins. Those guys are looking like they're going to stay. And now you're adding some other defenders into this team. Amazing, amazing. And he's definitely going to be one of the best forwards in this class. And, you know, the thing is, his jump shot does need improvement. But, you know, once he does add that, this will be one of one of the better picks of this draft. Anyways, so let's just keep moving on. So, pick number 21. New York trades this pick to the Clippers. And this is via Dallas. So from Tennessee at six foot five and 186 pounds, the Clippers select Keon Johnson. What's great about the Clippers is they're such a great defensive team. And honestly, if it wasn't for the Kawhi injury, I honestly think they would have made the finals and they probably would have won that as well. It was really unfortunate with the partial ACL tear and Kawhi Leonard is estimated to miss around nine months for that injury. So with this pick, they added some great perimeter defense, which is already great as the Clippers really thrive on that. And he could easily contest shots and force a shot in the mid-range and paint instead. This is what the Clippers would definitely thrive on, and they'll become even better once they add him. But some problems arise with his jump shooting capabilities. The Clippers definitely meet, need more consistent shot making while Kawhi Leonard's out as he's recovering from his ACL tear. Because we don't know what it's going to be like for him right because you know they say nine months but you know his injury history it could be 12 months instead he could just be taking his time he'll be maybe he'll be on lots of load management once he comes back you never really know about Kawhi, right so they could definitely have another shot creator in their system you know behind paul george marcus morris reggie jackson if he stays hopefully he does because the clippers could definitely use him adding keon johnson Amazing pick for the Clippers. I'm very happy that they selected this guy. And I'm really excited for the Clippers to come. They're definitely still going to be contenders. And this is a great system for Keon Johnson to be in. Now this was also a pretty surprising pick by the Pacers. Because they under the Lakers had this trade. Uh, this pick. But they ended up trading it to the Pacers. And from Kentucky at 6 foot 11, 206 pounds... The Pacers select Isaiah Jackson. And this is honestly a great pick. And the reason why I said su surprise, because the Lakers definitely would have been at a benefit if they selected this guy. Isaiah Jackson is a great shot contester, post defender, and an incredible shot blocker. And, you know, the thing is with the Lakers is that they have Russell Westbrook now from that trade in a previous video that I discussed about. They also have LeBron James and Anthony Davis. You know, LeBron James and Russell Westbrook are really ball dominant. And the Lakers plan on having Anthony Davis at the center. LeBron James as the power forward. And Russell Westbrook as the guard. Right. And with that ball dominance. And they're looking like Marcus Gasol will probably be the starting center. I don't know about Andre Drummond. It looks like he might be shipped out. Andre Drummond. I mean, sorry. Not Andre Drummond. Marcus Gasol. He's a good sort of defensive center, being able to set the screens and really be a good defensive presence against other bigs like Joel Embiid. It's just that now that you add that ball dominance, you sort of take away some of his uh, playmaking ability. So it probably would have been better just to have a defensive center like Isaiah Jackson instead. He adds a really great identity to their defense, especially in the paint. So this would have been a good pick for the Lakers. But, you know, now that the Pacers have him, right, 
you got another sort of tall defensive unit with Isaiah Jackson and Miles Turner. So this definitely complements uh, their defensive abilities, and he would be really great in case you know Miles Turner gets injured, right? Because he's had some unfortunate injury history. So this is a really good pick for the Pacers. Okay, so I know that I said Golden State are the winners of this draft so far, but now Houston's going up in this race. So Houston had the 23rd pick, and from Real Madrid at six foot eight, 229 pounds, they select Usman Garuba. And this is a pick via Portland. And this is an amazing steal for Houston. One of the best defenders in this class. He's able to defend and guard every position at such an elite level. And he is amazing on the perimeter and is a great shot blocker. This is a really good combination for this player. He's a surprisingly good playmaker as well. Being able to spot open teammates and kicking it out well. And though his offensive game is raw... I believe he'll be a really high impact player on the defensive end. And you know, like I was saying, Houston is starting to look more complete in this rebuild. You know, they add the shooter and Jalen Green, right? And now they're adding another defensive presence with Usman Garuba. Right? This is starting to look like a more complete team. And Houston is definitely going up as the winner of this draft. Okay, so I know I literally just said a minute ago that Houston looked like it was going to be one of the winners. I can definitely say they won this draft. From Arizona State, six foot five, two hundred fifteen pounds. This is a pick via Milwaukee. The Houston Rockets select Josh Christopher, and yes, Houston won this. They got four amazing prospects and Josh Christopher, amazing pick in this draft. What's even great about Christopher is that he's also going to reunite with his former AAU teammate Jalen Green. So there's already some chemistry over there. So they'll gel in pretty easily. And it's going to be great for the Houston offense and chemistry. And it's just really exciting to see them on the same team, right? Christopher's offensive skill set is going to be so fun to watch because he can score on all three levels. And his defense does need some work, but his impact off the bench will not go unnoted. So like I said, Houston, they are so much more complete now than they were just before the draft. Definitely going to be an exciting team to watch in the future. And man, they really did themselves well in this draft. They got some amazing, amazing players. And I am just so excited for this team as they're moving on from the three-point shooting James Harden, D'Antoni offensive era. And I'm, I'm just very excited. I know I've said this a lot of times, but Houston really took advantage of this draft and they really built this team right. Okay, so that New York trade that happened, the LA Clippers traded this pick to New York, and from Houston at 6'5 and 206 pounds, the New York Knicks select Quentin Grimes. So I was a bit confused why New York traded, but now that I look back at it, this is a pretty good pick for the Knicks. Grimes is a very versatile wing style player. He's one of the best shooters in the class, shooting 40.3% from three last season. It's already a great start, and he's only going to go up from here. He's got great spacing, which will help bring some sparks off the bench, and he's a great rebounder for his size as well. Six foot five, but being able to rebound so well, that adds a lot to their defensive identity that they're reestablishing after the Jordan era style Knicks, right? You know, with Patrick Ewing and Starks and those guys, right? This this is an amazing pick that they have, and especially for a guard as well. You know, he's a multi-positional defender. He isn't afraid to get stuck in on the defensive end. And New York just made a really great pick. And this is a good, strong second unit that the Knicks have. You know, the Knicks overachieved this season, but they're definitely going to come back in the playoffs. This is not a fluke by them. They're definitely going to come back and they'll definitely be an upset to some other teams that are contending in the East. So better watch out for the New York Knicks. This is a really exciting time for New York Knicks fans and Madison Square Garden. Okay, this is also an amazing steal for the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets had pick number 26, and from VCU, at 6'3 and 173 pounds, they select Nashan, his nickname is Bones Highland. And what's great about this guy is he's a really great scorer, and he really will add to their scoring depth. 
His outside shooting adds some spacing, and he'll definitely benefit from Jokic's playmaking ability. The thing is, though, is that he can commit turnovers pretty easily, but I don't really think of this as too big of an issue because he's not going to really be the one handling the ball much as Jokic and Murray will handle it unless Malone decides to have him be sort of the playmaker off the bench, right? Then maybe that might be a bit concerning, but if he is integrated into the you know rotation where Jokic and Murray, or at least one of them is on, and they have him sort of as a catch-and-shoot kind of style guy, then he'll be fine, right? And his on-ball defense does need work, but he does really well as a team defender. Now, I am a bit worried, though, because there has been a history of Mike Malone not really playing the young guys as much, so I really hope that this doesn't really hamper his development. I really hope that this guy does get a lot of playing time. He could definitely be one of those great role players, right? Substitution players that can just generate that quick spark of catch and shoot on offense, generating lots of fast points for the Nuggets, right? And this, he will definitely complement Jokic's playing ability. Okay, so Phoenix had the 27th pick, but just before the draft, they made a trade with Brooklyn and Brooklyn traded Landry Shamit for the 27th pick. So as a result, Brooklyn gets this pick and from LSU at six foot four and 210 pounds, they select Cam Thomas. Now the Nets lose some depth by trading away Shamit for pick number 27, but they make up for it by drafting an elite shooter in Cam Thomas. This guy can be an amazing shooter off the bench and being able to con- create a shot pretty easily, even when he's contested. The thing is always he suffers a ton from his poor defense and his athletic abilities give him a lot of room to improve on this, so I'm not really worried about this. But this is an amazing situation for Cam Thomas to be in, right? If he's in the rotation with Kyrie or Harden, right, and he can be that catch-and-shoot style guy, he'll definitely comment their complement their playmaking ability, be able to generate those fast points, you know, off the bench. And, you know, to have Kyrie, James Harden, and Kevin Durant as their mentors absolutely amazing situation to be in the Brooklyn Nets are such an exciting team and unfortunately due to injuries you know they weren't able to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals had they not have suffered a lot from injuries even if it was just Kyrie or just Harden out I believe they would have made the finals and won the chip you know they'll definitely be the favorites next year and Cam Thomas this is an exciting place for you to be in I'm very happy for you and I'm really happy that Brooklyn also selected you this is great offensive player to add to this team which is suffering a lot from death and great pick to have okay this pick is pretty interesting so the philadelphia 76ers they had the 28th pick and from tennessee at six foot four and 204 pounds they select Jaden springer amazing defender and he's versatile on that end of the floor he is a pretty good playmaker as well being able to find his teammates in the corner or in transition Now, his athleticism helps him get to the basket on a consistent basis, and that's arguably his best trait, as his other offensive skills are kind of flawed a bit. Now, his jump shot does need work, but this will be definitely a great fit with Philly, and he'll form a really great defensive tandem with Matisse Thibel off the bench. Now, this sort of does raise some sort of speculations about Ben Simmons' future either, as well, because... You know, Ben Simmons, he's being pursued by some teams, but the asking price is a lot. So we'll see, you know, into the free agency time in the next few weeks to come, whether the Sixers will make a trade for Ben Simmons. But I'm not really worried if the Sixers do trade him because they just added another great defender to this team. And the Sixers, uh, in the previous season, they had three all-NBA defenders. And even if they lose one, they also have Tyrese Maxey as well. And now they have Jaden Springer into the lineup. So they still remain a lot, retain a lot of their defensive identity as well. So this is a really good pick for Philadelphia. And I'm happy for him to be there because now he's going to be with Embiid. That's a great person to be around with. And he's also going to be around Thibel, which will help him a lot as a mentor on the defensive end. This is a great situation to be in. Okay. Amazing pick for Brooklyn. Brooklyn has been making really smart moves this draft. They, you know, with their lack of depth, they're really making it up for these really smart selections. 
From North Carolina at 6 foot 11 and 265 pounds, the Brooklyn Nets select Dayron Sharp. Dayron Sharp, you know, big size, 6 foot 11, be another great guy alongside Nick Claxton, and he's going to help their center rotation to be more flexible. One of the best rebounders in the class, and he is an elite offensive rebounder. He's not afraid to get physical, and you'll see him constantly boxing out on the offensive and defensive side of the glass. He's a good defender as well, having tremendous shot blocking ability, and he's a really good interior defender. He's also a great passer off the high post, being able to feed the cutters. And his offensive game is raw, but he'll be able to play with the most stacked offensive team in the league. So, you know, his role won't be too dependent. I mean, you're playing with KD, Kyrie, and Harden. I mean, you're in such an amazing position to be in. Like this team, the Brooklyn Nets are only going to go up from here. And to add a center to their lineup, amazing pick. This definitely adds their depth, and this definitely helps with the rebounding and shot blocking, sort of uh, their rebounding and shot block, blocking uh, capabilities, right? They're definitely making it up for that. And like I said before, Brooklyn is an exciting team to be with, especially with that big three trio. De'Ron Sharp's going to have an amazing time over there. Great mentorship, great development. I'm really happy for him, and I'm really happy that the Nets are making really smart decisions this draft. And the Nets have a lot of picks, even later on in the second round, and they're really making smart decisions right now. Really good front office. They're making the right decisions, and they're becoming a more complete team, and they're definitely going up there as favorites to win the championship next year. All right, so now we're just closing off this video, and we're going to uh, finish off this video with the last pick in round one. So Utah had this pick, but then they traded this to Memphis. So from Loyola at 6'11", 215 pounds, the Memphis Grizzlies select Santiago Aldama. Now, he could be a reminiscent of the Casal brothers or Kwame Brown, and he's a great post scorer. He's really adept at scoring in the lower high post in an efficient manner. His rebounding is good as well, great at boxing out. And he does have potential to be a good stretch big, but he's a really streaky shooter. So it will be hard to evaluate how good of a floor spacer he'll be. And He's also a really good shot blocker, but he struggles to defend the one-on-one -on -one matchups. And his thin frame allows opponents to embody him. Aldama was projected to go in the second round, but Memphis took a chance on him. And I really believe that they, he could thrive if he's used correctly. Now, as I said earlier, the Memphis Grizzlies lost Valanchunas, but they're making it up for this pick. right? Adding another guy to score in the post. And if he develops a better, stronger frame, he could definitely be a better contester in the paint especially against other bigs as well. And this is a great time to be in Memphis. Memphis nearly making the playoffs last year. They're on a really hot run. John Morant, Dylan Brooks, they're improving. They got a really fast style offense. This is going to be an amazing place to be in for the next few years. Memphis is definitely going to be contending in the Western playoffs really soon. And amazing place to be. Great staff, great teammates to be around. And I'm very happy that the Memphis Grizzlies selected him. Now, just to conclude this video, I'm just going to give off my closing remarks. Man, this was such a fun and exciting draft. I had such a fun time just going over this video because these players are just immensely talented. It's just so great to see so much talent across the entire draft class. Like, I really couldn't say there was like one really weak player in this round and i'm really happy for the teams that selected these guys i cannot wait to see what these guys will be like in the nba and i can't wait to see what these guys will be like in the summer league that's going to be happening in about a week you know this just an amazing time to be an nba fan amazing draft class this could possibly be the best draft class since 2003 we could definitely see some generational talent here. We might, we'll definitely see superstar talent. I'm predicting that. But man, amazing time to be an NBA fan. Just to finish off, the, war, the winners of this draft, definitely the Houston Rockets. Houston Rockets had four picks in this round. They added everything that they needed. They added a great playmaker, great centerpiece, great defenders. This is really helping them complete their team to rebuild around 
And this is looking like the Houston Rockets are being able to move on after the James Harden era. The next winner of this draft, Golden State Warriors for sure. They're always a consistently great scouting team. They're always able to choose their talent nicely. And I'm really glad that they added defenders to their team, which just makes them even more complete, right? I don't think the Warriors really needed a lot of offense as they already have Steph, Clay, Andrew Wiggins, right? That defensive identity that they add to their team, Golden State's definitely going to go up again in the Western Conference. They're definitely going to make it far, and I believe they can even make it as far as a Western Conference Finals next season. We'll all see how it depends, you know, what if Clay will be back. Because, well, he will be back, but just seeing how well he will be when he's back. Because he also had, you know, on top of the ACL tear, he also had an Achilles injury as well. So he was out for two years, right? So we'll see what he's like when he's back. Even if he's at 80%, the Golden State Warriors are a really serious team. You don't want to sleep on them again. Steph Curry, he just keeps on improving. <laughs> and man, it's just a great time to be there right now. And, you know, that's it for this video. What did you guys think about this draft? Did you guys like the players that were selected in this draft? Did you guys like the choices? What are your thoughts? Make sure to leave a like. Make sure to comment your thoughts on it below. Make sure to also subscribe to our channel. And make sure to press the bell for push notifications. So you're always up to date with our content. It also makes us eager to also update you with what we are talking about as well. Don't forget to also follow our Instagram, our Twitter, and our website, Speak True Sports, Speak True Sport, and www.speaktruesports.com, respectively. And I hope you guys all had a great time watching this video, listening to my thoughts about it. I definitely had a great time talking to you guys about this. I'm so excited to be talking about these guys with you later in the future and in these future years to come. Anyways, this is Sparsh, and I'm signing out. Take it easy, stay safe, and stay awesome.